Hi everyone, so here I am, the talking head. <laughs> That's how I like to refer to myself when I'm um, doing close-up videos and all you see is this talking head who's in bed. Yes, it rhymed. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I watched um, She Who Feels and um, Jan for Prince in the Sand 7. I watched their videos and um, it's um, so comforting and encouraging. Um, I, as time is passing, and for those of you who are newly diagnosed or um, are just newly feeling chronically ill and realizing that you're chronically ill and it's not just something that's going to pass, uh, there's a point where years have passed and all the hopes and wishes and um, prayers even from family members and friends um, pass as all things do in God's time and your health has not um, become what everyone had hoped for and for you you have to you know accept that this is chronic and I may not receive you know perfect healing from it that this may be a part of my human story for the rest of my life or just for more years or whatever God has in store and so at this point you begin to watch the ebb and the flow of your illness after a few years in, and um, you tweak your life and you fall away from um, focusing in on it as much every day and which means you start to take breaks from forums or and so forth and so on not meaning that you're too, totally disconnected but um, even you just move on to something else for a while until um, the calling comes for you to come back to um, these types of things and it's all good it's all what's supposed to happen in life it's normal and I just want to say to newcomers that um, you get used to it you do and you be you get to the point where you go to doctor's appointments you know they'll stretch them out to like three months um, that's where I'm at with a lot of doctors every three months and then like I went to my rheumatologist I think it was last week and she started me on Sabella actually so I'm waiting to see how that works for my pain since I'm allergic to every pain med now except for like prescription strength Advil but um, you go to see a doctor and they're asking you questions and you have the same answers that you've always had or the answers are have worsened like this is progressed that is happening this is happening this is new um, but you realize that you're not attached to how you feel about it you're just kind of saying it you're just explaining what you've explained a million times and realize oh I said it and I have no feelings about it I don't feel sad I don't feel frustration um, especially after a diagnosis if you've finally gotten some kind of diagnosis even if it's just as broad as dysautonomia um, there's a point like okay I've got a diagnosis and you know and we live with it it changes mind progresses nothing gets better it just progresses <laughs> But you begin to realize that you're, 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 you're laughing or you're still laughing. I've always tried to laugh, but I've had some dark times. And it's just not that deep anymore. It's just that this is the body you've given. Just like someone who's born um, um, mentally retarded or something like that where, you know, they don't harp on it every day. It's just this is, this is the way I am. And this is the way my story's written. And... I understand that everyone wants for me perfect health, but I'm realizing that I only want what God has for me because to try to grasp at anything else just causes so much unnecessary frustration where I can just very well tweak my life. And now I homeschool my son. I do it from the bed most of the time. And since I'm homeschooling, I don't even have to do it every day, you know, or our life is all homeschooling now to where I don't realize that we've put in a lesson without ever sitting down at a desk. 
I mean, God makes a way for all things to be done. And I say that because I know a lot of dysautonomia patients are um, firm God believers. And um, even if it's not a Christian background, it's Muslim, but that's what I've noticed. And I myself, born and raised Christian, um, and I, I especially am into um, all the, the wisdom that Buddha had because it totally matches all the wisdom that my wonderful Jesus had. And um, so you just get to this point where you realize, oh, I'm feeling so sick. And I just kept walking around saying I've been bedridden. And mom said something that no one said in a while. It's just stop saying it. Stop saying it. And that, that just makes it worse. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I said to her, you know, I've meditated on that, and I addressed it very calmly because I know, you know, she's had cancer, but she's never had a chronic illness. I'm like, um, well, she had, well, diverticulitis, but I'm like, actually, no, not saying it doesn't make a difference for me. Everyone's different. Um, but I said, for some reason, when I'm upright and I have to get a task done, take a shower or something, and I just keep going, oh my God, I'm sick. I'm sick just getting the energy of those words out for some reason it helps me I said but I'll quiet it and only say it in my mind mom because I realize that those who don't have a chronic illness it might drive them crazy so you know I just found myself a second ago since I was in my room saying out loud oh my god I'm so sick and I laughed and then when I said that to her she got it instantly and she's and she laughed and there's no more anger attached. There's a lot less. Every once in a while I get upset. Um, but there's a lot less anger attached to how people view me and my chronic illness. Even my loved ones who don't, and they love me, but they don't get it because they're not living it. And they'll say something that would you, back in the day I would think how insensitive. But it's not insensitive, it's just that they don't have the experience. And I can't fault them for that. And my mom is compassionate. Uh, by a oh my god by a long shot and it's okay we all have different stories and there may be things that she says that I don't understand I've never had cancer um uh, you know I've got gastroparesis and other things but I don't have diverticulitis where you know she's she's so many years in and has tweaked uh, there's a lot that goes into that and I guess in a way I don't know all I'm saying is I'm here I'm in the bed, years have passed, I've gathered more and more friends with dysautonomia and lupus, especially a lot of autoimmune friends, lupus and the like, and, um, but I'm still here, I'm still just Miss Nikki Ann, who's in the bed, <laughs> and I'm, the more friends I gain, the more I realize that there are people who like to treat their situation one way and there are people who like to treat it another way there's one who is it does not know me the the irish lady i love it she's like no doom and gloom <laughs> and i get it though even though i don't sense doom and gloom from others but that could be the way her senses are and that's what it makes her feel and that's okay when i view those doom and gloom videos i actually i love it i don't know it's something so reassuring and reaffirming to me that we're only humans and not every day it's like <gasps> it's not like that not every second even if every day you get a sense of yay in your day a lot of times we're just human and most of our day is just spent in a very simple even space and that can look gloomy to others as I stare at my walls meditating and so forth and praying and but I'm not feeling doomed nor gloomed. I prefer the darkness. I have my shades down still because of everything that happens when I get all these extra sensory things coming in. I don't feel, you know, people, my brother assumed mom had the house dark for one reason. Then he said to her, it's like that for Nikki, isn't it? She's like, yeah, I keep it dark for her. And that is so sweet, so sweet that she would be okay with living in darkness. And that it didn't make her feel doomed and gloomy. That she knew from her heart she was doing it for me. And that it didn't matter what people thought who came by to visit. And my mom loves sunshine. So for her to sacrifice that for me um, is beautiful. And um, 
so yeah time passes people and you're still sick and it's progressing for me and it's it's okay it's okay and I know um, I saw my GI like a month ago I've been having some serious issues um, um, and he said to me and this upset a lot of my doctors but it didn't upset me he is in a cancer prevention program and so a lot of his patients he's telling them you know you've only got three months you've only got this that he said to me Nikki you're the only patient he said your situation is not good it's bad but you're the only patient I don't have to say you know you've only got three months to live he said so you're my one patient I don't have to do that with and yes your situation's bad and then he started to say so what if um, a year from now you're you're bound to a real year wheelchair so what if two years from now you're 100 percent bedridden so what he said you know and what's how how much are we gonna dig to find he said when the disease that is causing the dysautonomia comes and shows its face he said it will then what you would have wasted all that time chasing 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 and he's like but so what what does that have to do with today? Yeah, homeschool your son. You know, because I was like, but you know, this and that, my, you know. He said, so what? So what if you have to tweak your life? So what would people think about it? So he just kept saying, so what? And that upset so many people <laughs> when I told the story. But for me, it was the wake up call. And I said to him before I left, I said, you know, thank you. I appreciated the truth. I prefer that. I prefer that people are real and truthful than, you know, and he, he's a great doctor. Every other time he's always sympathized with me. He never rushes me out of his office when he knows that there's not much that can be done except living with it and making adjustments. And he's always, you know, because now I have to do those hot water bottle enemas um, with the soap, the old fashioned ones. Um, I have to do that and then I had this rectal bleeding just pouring out I have to do those things so many times a week it's just not functioning you know had another gastric empty test so what there's no answer and if there was a so what and I had an answer then I could justify <laughs> arguing with him but I'm like it's dysautonomia some of us have a progressive kind some of us don't um, some of us will have miraculous healing and I believe that I do I do I could be one of them you know three years from now but until that change comes or until the disease finally shows its real face and real name whatever it may be so what I'm in this moment and what am I gonna do with it so and that's and I don't say all this to give you any answers. It's not an answer to anything. It's just how I've been living um, since the summer. And I took a break from, and I even unsubscribed um, so that if I did so happen to go onto YouTube for a moment, the videos that popped up wouldn't be about dysautonomia. I just needed a break. And my dysautonomia, I was still at doctor appointments. It was still progressing. <laughs> and so I'm, no matter what, even if I'm not on here, it doesn't change the fact that I have this autonomy. I know it. And there was just a time for a break. And then now I'm back. The break is done and I can go on and do what God has for me to do with it next. And then it could be a month from now where God's like, take another break. And I would. I would. And if that means unsubscribing from everybody whom I care about, it's okay. Because I know I'm just giving them back to God. The same way God gives me back to myself. And I love you guys. Jan, thank you for that wonderful video response you made um, to she, she Who Feels. And that's it. I'm almost 15 minutes in. But, um, yep, more to come because life keeps going and it's amazing. Life is definitely amazing. Not always fun, but it's amazing. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen. I've got to do enemas. I'm not even going to one of my doctor appointments today because I can't be upright at all. I still got to do that enema because I've got IV fluids come out. So, Bezos. How do I spend so long? How do I stop?